Sanwell is changing the structure of the agency from designated regions to a province-based structure. While Sanwell has always worked closely with municipalities, local communities and other stakeholders, the change allows for even greater understanding of the specific needs of each area. Sanwell's Chief Executive Officer, Reginald Dimana, pointed out that with more provincial roads being added to Sandral's original mandate, which is to manage South Africa's national roads, having provincial offices will allow Sandral to be closer to the road network. In KwaZulu-Natal, the provincial head is Dudley Mbambo, based in Peter Maritzburg. As he takes on this exciting new challenge, we asked Dudley about his journey with Sandral and the road. Now, Dudley, let's start with your journey. How exactly did you decide you want to become an engineer and how did you then end up joining Sandral? Sure. Yeah, I have to think um, way back for that one. Um, I suppose it all goes back to when my dad, um, who growing up, uh, he was very involved in our community and so he found himself often being put on community structures and, and boards. So there was a period in the 90s when I was in high school where he served on the board of uh, Umgeni Water. Um, and uh, through those uh, interactions, um, some director, I met some directors uh, from there uh, who were uh, engineers um, and also uh, people working uh, with um, purifying uh, water. Uh, so I became very interested and I had an affinity for chemistry in, in, in high school. Um, and, and I actually thought uh, maybe I'd become an, an, an analytical uh, chemist. But um, in, in, in high school during, during grade 11, they let you go for a week and go work where you think, uh, and, um, in a company, where you think it might like to work. So I went to Mgeni Water, spent the week um, uh, working with water samples, testing them and so on and so forth. And it was the most boring thing I could ever have uh, done. And I decided, no, that is, that is not for me. But I was still uh, saying then, oh, well, what else? Maybe I can build the dams, the, 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 the pipelines and so on and so forth. Uh, so I intended to go and do chemical engineering. Um, so even though I got an A in, in physics in, in metric, I was one point short of the chemical engineering uh, track uh, because it required two more points than every other sort of type of engineering. Uh, so I was a bit disappointed, um, but then uh, I, I discovered that in civil engineering, I could still achieve a lot of the, the stuff that I intended to do as a chemical engineer. And now that you've transitioned into this new role as the provincial head of KZN, talk to us about the N2, N3 upgrades. I mean, there's a number of construction projects that are all happening at the same time and congratulations for that. Tell us some, about some of the projects you are working on. Yeah, sure. The N2, N3 project, that's probably the the, the biggest program that our office has, has undertaken. It's probably equivalent um, to the work that was undertaken in Gauteng in, um, uh, heading towards uh, the World Cup 2010. Um, and and um, while that um, uh, project um, has done a lot to uh, 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 ease traffic flow in Gauteng, and thereby boosting the economy. This project um, is actually touches the, 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 the lifeblood of the country. Um, most of the goods that come into South Africa uh, from uh, international or go out, um, go out through the port in Durban. And the N3 is a, is a, is a key corridor. Um, and um, over the years, uh, the capacity that was built up in the 80s on the on the N N3 has been eaten up as traffic grows with population and uh, increase in um, number of heavy vehicles that need to 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 use the road. So the the planning for the upgrade of of uh, the N3 together with the N2 started, sure, in maybe about around 2008. 
so it's been a very long uh, uh, project uh, uh, coming. And as we've, over the years, um, while we started off looking at it uh, just from a technical perspective, um, I think as Sunral has gone through its um, transition into focusing on stakeholders, focusing on transformation, um, the end to end three program has become a vehicle to implement what is in our Horizon 2030 strategy and our transformation policy. I mean, uh, one, one uh, can go into uh, detail in terms of like the, 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 the technical aspects. Um, I think uh, we'll probably see in a couple of years time, a lot of the components of these uh, projects will probably win awards uh, for the technical excellence. But for me, it is what uh, these projects are going to do for the communities. Um, we have minimum 30% subcontracting to uh, SMMEs, and uh, black SMMEs in particular. And that is really in touch with our transformation policy, which is looking to spread the, the, the cake, you know. Um, and the, the, the numbers that we're talking about, um, our, our current estimate, by the time we are done with all of the projects, it would have, we would have spent about 50 billion rand. Now, if you think that about 30% of that's going to uh, uh, black SMMEs, will really uh, boost um, uh, the, 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 their prospects and set them up to go on to uh, bigger things. The changing weather patterns and the flooding in KZN in particular have been of concern and quite big problems in the province. In your new role, what new measures are you looking to implement in order to protect the current infrastructure? Yeah, you know, in case and we've been especially hard, hard hit. Um, I remember in April 2022, um, the state of our network was the worst it's, it's, it's ever been. Um, but I think because of um, the measures we had uh, put in place in terms of having readily available routine road maintenance contractors to immediately go out there and address issues that could be addressed at that time, um, to um, uh, redirect traffic onto alternative routes, um, uh, set up traffic accommodation and so on and so forth and, and, and go and clear up uh, issues we are able to respond faster than 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 most uh, but it, it caused us to to uh, have some reflection on how do we better prepare uh, for for climate change and I mean I think if we if we look just back at last year uh, around about September when there was a huge snowfall which uh, has not been seen in, in many decades, certainly not in my lifetime. Um, it, it, it has um, really uh, awakened us to the fact that we need to um, better prepare for, um, uh, the, the, for climate change. One of the um, uh, measures that we've implemented as uh, an organization is we are sponsoring the chair for sustainable transport at the University of, of KSN, which then allows for research into areas of how do we make our uh, infrastructure more resilient. So through our participation in the Committee of Transport Officials, we've assisted in developing a new guideline uh, called TRH uh, 24 uh, that looks at using nanotechnology to make our materials um, more hydrophobic. Uh, so what that allows us to do also is to use um, locally uh, found materials uh, when we upgrade roads and improve them and results in uh, more resilient and also more cost-effective road, bu road building. Um, and we have then also uh, uh, through our head office, set up a number of research um, uh, 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 panels, research teams that are looking into uh, ways of making our infrastructure more robust. Uh, 
fortunately for us our designs for our our roads are, are at the highest level they are so we we were less impacted than um, uh, other road authorities but also in in 2022 then we uh, through the minister's permission were able to go and intervene on some of those uh, roads and we partnered in particular with the cases in uh, department of transport and uh, did a lot of work in repairing uh, the failures that had happened on the m4 and r102 um, and yeah so I, I i think for me what um the, the 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 future holds in terms of our responses to um, uh, climate change is really leveraging uh, the uh, technical skills that we have internally, doing research um, and partnering with other um, organizations because we do not live as an island. Can you take us through the current projects in KZN? Uh, on the N3, what we focused on first was getting the sections that were two lanes in each direction um, uh, to improve because that's where we had the biggest constraints. So um, we started off with the sections uh, from between uh, Ashburton and um, Linfield uh, interchanges and then um, from Linfield up to Dardanelles uh, interchange and then from Dardanelles interchange up to um, Cato Ridge. Um, we've, we've then subsequently also then moved further north uh, with the uh, Ashburton up to uh, Gladys Manzi and uh, Gladys Manzi up to New England uh, Road. Um, so there's uh, quite a number of, of projects as you drive through um, uh, that are in, in construction. Um, and we expect that the, the, the first three will come to an, an end uh, during the course of 2025. Dudley, thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us today on Sandville TV. We wish you all the best in your new role as Provincial Head of KZN. Thank you very much.